Hello everyone. My artist presentation today is about a woman named Lorraine O'Grady. To start off with some background information, Lorraine O'Grady was born on September 21, 1934. She grew up in Boston, Massachusetts as the daughter of two Jamaican immigrants. She attended two colleges known as Wesley College and Boston Latin Academy. Although she was an economics graduate with a minor in Spanish literature, she turned out to be one of the most significant contemporary artists working in performance, conceptual, and feminist art. It all began when she got a job as an assistant instructor at the School of Visual Arts. She realized she didn't know anything about art, so she started to read books about it. A book by Lucy Lepard was one that convinced her to begin creating art. Most of her work is presented in museums, galleries, street art, and also she uploads her work to her website, LorraineOGrady.com. Her medium is primarily printouts and collages of her own photos. And as of 2014, the artist now lives in a New York apartment. Looking at her work chronologically, in 1981, the untitled series featuring Madame Moselle Bourgeois Noir was one of O'Grady's first big pieces. The purpose of this black and white photography series is to make a statement about the ongoing issue of acknowledging female artists and artists of color. What also makes this a production is that Lorraine O'Grady created this character to act out a certain scene to express her overall idea and intention. This next clip, narrated by the artist herself, gives a clearer description and understanding of the series. This is Mademoiselle Bourgeois Noir a persona created by the artist Lorraine O'Grady. This was O'Grady's way of calling the art world out for continually excluding women and artists of color. I'll hand it over to the artist. So here she is, dressed in her gown and cape made of 180 pairs of white gloves. And she's also carrying a bouquet. And the bouquet is white chrysanthemums studded into the knots of a white cat of nine tails made of sailing rope. She begins to give away the flowers from her bouquet, and she's smiling, she smiles, and she says, won't you help me lighten my heavy bouquet? After a while, all of the flowers are given away, and the bouquet has now become unapologetically the cat of nine tails, or what she called the whip that made plantations move. And she begins to beat herself with the whip. I got a little over-enthusiastic, and so I beat myself for about five to ten minutes, and there were practically welts on my back. When she first did the performance, she shouted out, Black art must take more risks, because she'd been looking around, and she had decided that the art was very well-groomed, a little too well-groomed. She had never encountered a world as absolutely segregated as the art world. Not just a social form of segregation, it was an intellectual and cultural form of segregation with this use of the word quality. But this was concealing a totally lethal combination of condescension toward black capacity and black relevance. Everyone seemed to have settled. This is the way it is. We have to just do the best we can. Unfortunately, Mademoiselle Bourgeois Noir was not about settling. She was about breaking down doors. Up next is another series of hers titled River's First Draft. This was also made in the 1980s where O'Grady primarily worked with photography and production based on the subject of racism and the life of a black female. In her work, her goal is to connect to her family history and share her own experiences as a person from many cultures. Here in this series, she depicts her own experience of coming from a Caribbean family to the art life in New York City with its so-called freedom, but with gender tensions and racism. The story behind these two photos is that the woman in red was kicked out of an art studio by black male artists. She decides to then walk down the stream where the little girl in the pink sash reconciles and guides, guides the woman in red to the exit of the stream. The woman in white, totally uninvolved, calmly watches as she continues to grate her coconut. Her next photography and production series, titled Art Is, took place as a street parade in Harlem, 1983. 
She had a huge unauthorized float with many street performers going through the crowd, having people pose behind the gold picture frame and become a piece of art. It was a way of including everyone in the art instead of some people being excluded, forgotten about, and unappreciated like lots of people in the art world. The pictures are also supposed to express the uneasiness people of color feel around police officers. There is a big difference in their overall energy and happiness when a cop is around and when they aren't. This production overall was a big risk for Lorraine O'Grady, but she took it and captured so many beautiful smiles in a frame of art. Now entering the 1990s, we will be looking at two more of O'Grady's photo collage series. The first series, titled The Clearing, was made in 1991. This is an example of a panel image she created with the left side titled Green Love and the right side titled Love in Black and White. In this piece, she incorporated a few genres including surrealism, postmodernism, form formalism, and beauty. What made her want to create this was her concern that postmodern art was becoming so simplified that it was beginning to change for the worse. Her intentions were to prove a point and create a true postmodern piece. The second photo collage series from 1994 is titled Miscegenated Family Album with a medium of sibachrome prints. In total, Lorraine O'Grady made 16 of them. After the devastating death of her sister Devonia, her process of the mourning began with her art. Since the two of them were never able to get back on good terms before her death, Lorraine decided to keep her memory alive in a special way. O'Grady uses multiple diptychs to compare similarities between her sister and Nefertiti, an Egyptian queen. The two of them show similarities between themselves, their husbands, their children, as well as their mixed race background. This series is very intimate and personal to the artist. It is more like an artistic memorial of someone she yearned to form a true relationship with. The Family Album is a very personalized series that still holds on to the theme of race hybridity and identity. Finally, the last piece of Lorraine's work that we will be looking at is one of her most recent projects that was made in 2010. This was a gallery titled The First and the Last of the Modernists. It included four colored diptychs of Michael Jackson and Charles Baldair. O'Grady had a love for Charles and his work, especially how he bravely changed from Romanticism art to modern art. She even taught his work for two decades at the School of Visual Arts. She had an unexplainable love for Michael Jackson. When he passed away, O'Grady felt like a family member just died, so this was very tough on her. Her two inspirations just happened to be two amazing artists with many similarities. Lorraine described them both as the divine self-belief, the ambiguous sexuality, the fantic devotion to craft, the drugs, the unironic aspiration to greatness, the flamboyant clothing and makeup. Putting these two outstanding and powerful artists side by side to admire their similarities was her version of a piece of art itself. In conclusion, Lorraine O'Grady creates very personal art that relates to critical issues going on in the world. She creates art in hopes to bring awareness to issues including racism, equality, and the acknowledgement of artists of color. She makes many statements in her art pieces to express her opinions and share her past experiences. Her material choice of mainly photography is very significant because it allows the artist to capture a real moment, a real experience that has so much meaning behind it, and then she shows it off to the world. It allows the viewer to look at this moment that is captured and think of the deeper meaning in the bigger picture. O'Grady also uses photography to include others. She wants to be an inclusive artist and she is. She invites others to be a part of her art and she tries to capture the beauty of everyone. The critics love her for this. They admire how she continues to break the boundaries of art while bringing awareness to worldwide issues. She's seen as a proactive artist who always brings something new and interesting to the table. Critics claim that Lorraine O'Grady grabs the world's attention with her trailblazing career.